This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. I've been waiting for celebration all year long. Are you ready to celebrate? Hey, Chicago, what do you say? Back to that same old place. Sweet home, Chicago. Oh, and guess what? This is the podcast you're looking for. This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. This episode of Coffee with Kenobi is brought to you by MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. For all of your travel needs to the Disney theme parks, the cruise lines, or anywhere you want to go on vacation, be sure to go to our affiliate link, which can be found in the show notes, on the front of our webpage, or on our Twitter feed, and sign up for a free, no-obligation quote. We are also brought to you by One Nation Coffee, the official brew of Coffee with Kenobi. For the best coffee in the galaxy, be sure to go to www.onenationcoffee.com and sign up for a subscription service so you never miss out on the best coffee in the galaxy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here. It is celebration two weeks to go. Coffee with Kenobi Show number 267. Welcome, everyone. We are joined today by two very special guest co-hosts. First, let's bring in Tom Gross. Well, hello, everybody. It's great to be here and just... When I think that I can't get more excited about something, each week it just continues and continues to grow. <laughs> I know, I know. There's been no shortage so of, of craziness uh, and excitement, and that is only going to be added by uh, someone who is also joining us today. Now, Corey, is, of course, usually joins us for the Road to Celebrations, but he and his family are on vacation. They decided to go on the beach instead of be on the podcast this week, which I can't say that I blame them for that. I think that was probably a very wise decision. <laughs> but we are not short on entertainment value because the one and only Lisa Dullard is here today. Hi, Lisa. The one and only, huh? The Hello. one and only. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are. It's going to be fun. So this is extra special for me because obviously neither of you have been to Celebration yet. So being able to live uh, and breathe it in through both of your eyes, I really like living vicariously through people. I'm very excited to see you both experience this amazing weekend. Yeah, yeah uh, you, if you've been enjoying my little freakouts, I'm like having some major spaz attacks. <laughs> that's okay. You're not alone. <laughs> you are not alone. Well, that kind of leads nicely into last week we talked about, we introduced the virtual queue and panel reservation system that they were proposing and now we've seen it live there are a number of things that have happened uh, i think probably and you probably would both agree with me on this the, the major questions that people are having is the different kinds of badges and mm -hmm. how do i get into these things uh if i want to sit there with my friends so this is what it says on the celebration webpage. i'll put a link to this on the show notes i'll try to read this and we'll try to make sense of it it says fans may enter a panel lottery for each day their badge is valid for or as a group with size determined by the number of badges associated with the original order confirmation number or email previously entered up to a maximum group size of six. Fans will also have the ability to group their lottery entries together with other friends and family up to a maximum of six people. Now, here's how they tell you how to do it. We'll try to make sense of this. If you would like to sit in the same seating section as your friends and family who purchase badges on separate orders, you will need to submit your panel lottery submission with a shared group code. Group codes are available on the lottery submission webpage. On the webpage, select I am submitting as a group and you will be shown both a field where you can enter a group code that you have been given by friends and family as well as a unique group code that you can share with friends and family. If you want to be in the same seating section, Make sure everyone in the panel in your party enters a lot. The lottery is a group before the lottery takes place. Okay, so that's what it says. Uh, what questions do we have on this? Because when I read this, and feel free to correct me, I see, oh, look, you can enter a group code that you've been given. Where do you get this group code, though? Is that on the same page as well? Boy, I'll tell you what. As you were reading that, I th my mind was going, okay, I got this. And then you got to something, I'd be like, 
uh, what now? <laughs> and so I, I think you are right, Dan. I think that from what I have experienced is that one person in the group. Oh, your question was, where do you get that group code? Yeah. Uh, I thought, well, didn't it say there was a link to the group codes in there? I, I thought, Lisa, what did you notice? Uh, it sounded like it said it's where you go to reserve the, you know, the panel. That's when you go to that link, that mm-hmm. there would be an option there to enter a group. Yeah, but, you know, yeah, no, that's true. Where do you get the group code from? Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm scanning this. How's the advanced lottery work? Da, 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 which parts of the panel? Does it automatically generate a group code when you... That's what I'm wondering. You know, like the ones, I mean, obviously the, the merchandise one came out today. And what, let's share our experiences with that. Lisa and I and Tom and Corey have a group DM on Twitter where we're chatting constantly yeah. trying to figure all this stuff out and, and sort of clear the cobwebs of what's going on. And I do think, and I want to give a special shout out, especially to Daniel Kennedy and the good folks at Lucasfilm and Repop who are making this happen because it's extremely daunting Star Wars fans are very passionate, very uh, a very uh, particular group. We know what we like, we know what we want, and we also would like things to be as stress free as possible. But that's not really a possibility with as many people are going and as in as much as we are hoping to be able to experience as a collective fandom. So they've been amazing. I think they've been very helpful. They've gone had to weed through a lot of challenging, daunting things and a lot of firsts. And that, there's always a lot of risk there when that uh, is something that you were looking at. But I thought they've done a great job. So Lisa sends us the link. Hey, the, the, the merchandise lottery is live. And today, the merchandise lottery is for the Funko Pop exclusives, for the Hasbro stuff, and for the Lego stuff. So let's share our experiences. Lisa, why don't you go first? Well, I, it was very simple. I didn't have any problems at all. Um when I clicked on the link, you get uh, you get placed in line, and then it gives you an estimate of how long you're going to be sitting there. And I think I had about a 20, 22 minute wait. And uh, yeah. then, then another screen after that time, you're redirected to another screen, and then that has the three, you know, Hasbro, Lego, and Funko. And you enter the lottery for one. Then when you finish that up, you get to enter the lottery for the second one, and that and it says it sends you confirmation emails to let you know that your, you know, your submission went through. I've only gotten a confirmation from, for Funko. I haven't gotten a confirmation from the Hasbro one or the Lego one yet, but I'm guessing it might just be because they had an overwhelming yeah. number of people <laughs> would, would be my guess, but, but it, right. it, 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 you know, there was no hiccups or anything like that. It didn't, uh, the website didn't, you know, go down or yeah, there was no crash or anything. My, no. Not mine either. Tom, what what kind of experiences did you have? Um, now, I I got on later in the day. I was about four o'clock this afternoon, and you guys had really kind of worked the bugs out of it. And so I I went in. I had a few questions for you, Dan, but it was more logistical than it was, or, or no, it was more. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it was. More, but it wasn't the- how to do it. Yeah, um, and. And I got in very easily. I, I was expecting to wait, uh, but I clicked in there and boom, I was in. It said, it said you may have to wait. And then it said, you're in. <laughs> you have 10 minutes or something like that. Um, and I, I have received, I'm looking right now in my email. I just got just two minutes ago, my last one. So I have confirmation on all of them. Uh, Lego was the last one I just got a few minutes ago. I got Funko about four hours ago and I got Hasbro almost immediately. Huh. Um, so, but now they went into different, each one of them went into a different, I, I use Gmail. One went to my primary tab, one went to my social tab and one went to my promotional tab. So just to give you a heads up that That's they may be falling into different boxes of your, uh, email, Right. Um, when they go in, but, but really it, it was pretty slick. And the thing that I, I just kept telling myself that I, somewhere I'd either read this or Dan, you had uh, given us confirmation on this, that it doesn't matter if you're the first one in on the lottery or yeah. the last one in days later, it's an equal draw. So I wasn't going to get myself too worked up, uh, to get in there. 
Um, now, I might be foolish for that, but it sounded pretty easygoing. And so I was like, I, well, I wasn't available during the day today anyway. But when I got home, I thought, oh, I'll give it a whirl. I went through all of your texts and your uh, that group that you had mentioned and easy peasy. Well, I, I have actual confirmation from Lucasfilm personally that whether you put it in, whether you're the first person to submit it or the very last one, it doesn't really matter. It's it's all – you're just put into uh, the big lottery. I mean this isn't like the lottery like the Shirley Jackson short story. This is a, a lot – a lot, a lot better. <laughs> it's a lot better one. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Look, at read the short story, kids. It'll, you'll get the joke. Oh, um, my gosh. It's uh, it's fun. It's going to be cool that we all have the chance to do it. I like that I don't have to worry about crashing my Wi-Fi or my computer in order to be sure that I might get a chance to do it. So I thought it was cool, too, because it says, you know, I've been to many, many virtual queues, you know, for sports, for Hamilton tickets, for all kinds of stuff. And I thought this was the most streamlined one I've ever experienced. They had a, it tells you how much time you had left and it kept clocking. But for me, I started out with 22 minutes. And then about a minute later, I was down to 19. It just, I thought it moved very, very quickly. There's a little, uh, sort of like an image of a, a little man sort of walking through with the, like, in the middle of your screen and the closer you get to it, it being your turn, it's to the very right. And he's kind of like, it's almost like a Tron light cycle. He's got the light following him as he's going across the screen. And then like Lisa said, all of a sudden you're in and it was great. Huh. It was great. Did you, you not notice that? I, I was not even waiting long enough to apparently have gotten that little guy on his Tron yeah, cycle. Well, he was fun. Well, he was just walking, but he, yeah, he was walking. I saw the yeah. little guy. Yeah, he was fun. He was fun. Uh, but that's not the only fun. Tom, I know you and I were talking earlier about something else pretty cool that I'm sure you're excited about. Yeah. Um, is uh, I'm assuming you're talking about the way I have experienced Star Wars celebration in the past. Yeah. And that is the Star Wars show live stream. Mm -hmm. And I am there. So they're doing that again in Chicago. And um, and this is great for those who, um, even if you're there and you're streaming it on your phone because you're in a different part of the center, convention center, or you're just charging your phone or whatever, sitting in a spot or you're eating your lunch or whatever, this is great for that. Or even better, for those of you who were not able to get tickets or you're too far away to get to Chicago, this has been just the best way. And I don't know, Lisa, if you experienced the Star Wars Live last year or the last time it was going. We ran it. We and our family ran it on our – streamed it onto our TV all weekend long. And I really feel like that when you guys talk about Star Wars Celebration um, from uh, Orlando, I feel like I was there um, because of this. So they um, – it will be – April 12th through the 15th, and it will be tuned in either on starwars.com or youtube.com. And it'll be, of course, Andy Gutierrez, Anthony Carboni, um, and then co hosts Max Scoville and Chastity. Uh, I'm going to need some help on this last name. Vincenzo? I uh, think so. Yeah. Vincenzo. Yeah. Um, and uh, Ashley Eckstein is scheduled to be on there, uh, Jordan Hemborough. And they do a fantastic job of bringing guests onto the stage, panning the crowd, um, getting out into the panels and live streaming those panels. Um, it was it was fan. It was like having a front front row seat to the whole thing. It's great, and when you're there, you get to go up to the stage. I mean, it's all it's usually crowded. I mean, packed to the gills. But just about everybody who's in Star Wars or works on Star Wars in any medium, they'll be there. Heck. When we were there last time, Corey and I left that area and we turned the corner. We were doing something. We heard all this yelling and screaming. We came back around. Oh, you just missed Harrison Ford and George Lucas. Oh, is that it? So, yeah, <laughs> if something big is going on, I would suggest going to the live stream to check it out because they're going to be talking to the biggest names in Star Wars. And it's it's pretty much a gigantic thrill. Lisa, I'm sure this is extra exciting for you because I know you've been a big um enjoyer of the live stream and I are going to get to see it live. Oh yeah. I've always, well, last year I was able to stream it on my TV. So I had it on, you know, the big screen and watched it all day long, everything I could. So it's, yeah, it's going to be really cool to be able to see it for real <laughs> up close, but then to also be able to check it out on my iPad. If I'm, you know, like Tom said, if you're somewhere else and something else is going on across the, the, the convention center, you can still check it out. So 
no, that's really, it's awesome that they're doing it again this year. I love it. I love it. So this is something I think that I've been excited to share with our coffee with Kenobi family members. But last weekend, speaking of the Star Wars Celebration show and the live stream and all the things going on in McCormick Place, I went to McCormick Place last weekend. C2E2 was going on. I woke up that morning and I was taking my son back to Chicago, back to school. And I was thinking about it. And I thought, hey, I talked to my wife, Deanna, and I said, hey, what do you think about me going up there and kind of checking things out? She's like, yeah, that'd be awesome. You should totally do that. So I did. Uh, it's pretty awesome when you have a, a supportive spouse that makes things so great. And she's always been so great and supportive of Coffee with Kenobi. And I think that helps a ton because now I know very much the lay of the land of McCormick Place. The last time I was there, I think, was in 1992, <laughs> 1991. So it's been a while. It's been, it's been yeah, a hot minute or so. That's about yeah. Yeah, for me too. Early '90s, I went to the auto show one year. Yeah, I went to the electronic show, and that was back when they had just came out with a new thing called stereo. Ooh. They did, yeah, ooh, exciting. <laughs> ooh, yeah, <laughs> they went on my my jalopy because we just traded the horse in. That sounds like what we oh, sound oh man. Um, so I wanted to go around and experience it. I got a ton of tips that I wanted to share with everybody. First thing I want to emphasize: we talked about this last week on show two sixty six. But do not park there if you can help it in any way, shape, or form. I got there well after lunchtime because I wasn't in a huge hurry. I didn't necessarily want to try to get into all the main major panels at C2E2 because that wasn't what I was about for that weekend. It was more of a scouting trip to see what was going on and share with everybody. So I got there well after it was open. So you'd think it would be much easier to get inside because everybody was already there. It took me 45 minutes to an hour just to get to the parking lot after I got to the exit for McCormick Place. Mm. Now, there are, if you take the public transportation, which I think is really great in Chicago, there are trains that stop right there at McCormick Place, which makes it very simple. So that is an option. Ubering and taxiing is certainly an option. If you use the shuttle system for the hotels, that is a great thing to do as well. But as I said, it took me 45 minutes to an hour to park. I had to pay to park. And then I had to walk from my parking spot into McCormick Place, which is a couple of blocks. It wasn't that big of a deal. They do have shuttles there for people who have a harder time walking great lengths or just uh, were very tired. So that option is there as well. But it took a really long time. And again, as I mentioned, you park at your hotels in Chicago. They're expensive. Like ours was going to be $65 a night if we parked Mm -hmm. there. And we're not going to do that. So Again, I can't emphasize enough. If you can avoid taking a car there at all, at, at all, if it's if it's affordable, if it's plausible and practical for you, I would highly suggest doing that. That's the biggest one. Another thing, I'd spend three and a half hours walking around McCormick Place, admiring how gigantic this floor is. I mean, it's huge. I've been to San Diego Comic Con. I've been to other celebrations. I've been to lots of stuff. This was much bigger than that. It just seemed much bigger than that. And then I was talking to Joe Caroni, who's one of these Star Wars illustrators and artists. We had him on a couple of shows ago. And he said, yeah, Dan, this is uh, not even where Celebration is going to be. And I said, what do you mean? He said, no, you're, we're, Celebration's going to be in McCormick West. We were confused, too, and we were taking lots of pictures and scouting things out. Then we realized it's in the other major area of McCormick Place. That's how big this place is. It's so huge. You could have multiple conventions going on at once, and nobody would know. So I ran over to where uh, it's going to be. I went through different security stuff and all that. I will say the security, at least when I was at McCormick Place, was not stellar. I mean, they had the metal detector set up, but I don't know if it had been a long day or what, but they said, ah, just hold your phone up over your head and just walk through the... uh, (laughs) Okay. Nice. So just be, be aware of that. I mean, I guess in the morning, a friend of mine... Went through and he said security was really, really tight and very, very strict. So I guess it's it's one extreme or the other, really. Um, so there's that. Uh, Temperature-wise, you know, it is Chicago. It is Illinois. Outside is a mixed bag. It, it's probably going to be a little chilly there. I mean, you wear, I mean, I'd be fine in a sweatshirt, but other people who may not be used to cold may want to wear a regular coat. Mm-hmm. On the inside, there were certain areas of the convention floor where I thought it was really, really warm. And I thought, oh, it's a little kind of feels a little humid almost here. And then you'd go about 25 more steps and you would need to put your sweatshirt back on. So you need you need to be sure that you have options for yourself. So so you're comfortable now. Now, knowing what I know, I wouldn't have kept my sweatshirt on. I just would have had a T-shirt on because I'd rather be cold than hot. But other people are very much the opposite. 
just be very mindful that it's going to be a challenging to figure that out. And as far as the podcast stage goes, I, and I talked about this on our Instagram stories on coffee with Kenobi, which you can check on coffee with Kenobi's Instagram. They have stories that you save, but I was in one hallway thinking I was about to see the podcast stage, but it was a dead end. So I had to go out, ask another security guard. I had to go up two flights of stairs, walk across a long hallway and go down two flights of stairs to be on the other side of the first floor. Mm -hmm. And that seems kind of crazy, and it is, but that's just how big this place actually is. I did have a video on there that shows how you can get there from the outside if your taxi or Uber is dropping you off. But it's definitely going to be a good idea to get the lay of the land. I'm glad it's going to be open on the 11th before they have any panels going so people can get used to things because there's a lot to take in. Well, and with all that said, Dan, I'll, <clears throat> I will um, second your uh, your excellent work on um, – Instagram and your visit uh, during the C2E2 because, and I highly recommend people to watch that Insta Instagram story that you put together, by the way, well done. Hey, uh, thanks, I can't man. say that enough because, Appreciate that. and I'll tell you why, because when you watch that, you still may not be able to piece together everything, but boy, you're sure going to, you're sure going to recognize, Oh, I saw this on Dan's Instagram story, or I saw this on, on the coffee with Kenobi Instagram uh, page. And I think, did you put it just there or was it on Twitter? I, I just caught it on Instagram. I put it on Instagram and, and then linked over to Twitter and Facebook too. Okay. So, um, but then they do have, uh, they do have the layout and the floor plan of all the exhibit areas, as well as the podcast stages and everything um, on starwars.com. And you might need to, in some cases, I, I've sat here and looked through this mm, for maybe 15, 20 minutes. And I was pulling out all my geography skills back from, you know, when I was a kid and, and trying to figure out the, the angles and the measurements of all of this. It starts coming together once you look at it for a while, but I definitely recommend i would probably in fact i will probably print this out they give you a, a file that you can download and print um it will be a lot easier i think that way than trying to read it on a phone or a tablet um mm -hmm. as i'm sitting here looking at my laptop it's all you know, it's sideways um but just as an aside i want to say when you look down where the podcast stage is i can see your up to over and down to because yeah. there's a road a parking lot road that goes right between the two buildings on the first floor but looky there do you see i see Corey club's work on <laughs> on the on the map that's right that is right Look how awesome that. is that how awesome Look is that, that. <laughs> but so yeah so you can see where the podcast stage will be in that little area where you've got the university stage and the twin sun stage um, all in that area, but definitely, um, it, I'm glad that they put this out here in time for us to, to be able to look through. And then they got the exhibition hall, um, and then they they blow up the exhi exhibition hall um, to where you can see where the individual vendors are, where the autographs are, where the Star Wars uh, show live stage will be. Fantasy Flight games, they've got some of the top vendors like Lego and Hasbro and Fantasy Flight um, and some others uh, listed there. And then I wanted to point out, and someone had been telling me this. Oh, my, my good friend Andrew from uh, Star Wars Action News was telling me this. The Celebration stage is in the Wind Trust Arena. Did you get a chance to go over there? Uh, yeah, but I couldn't get into it, but it's okay. massive. It, it's, I, it's over 6,000 people. I looked up the capacity of Wintrust Arena, 10,000. Oh, my God. And so when you think about now, they'll probably cut off whatever's going to be behind the stage. So we're talking six to 7,000 seats for the main stage. Oh, yeah. It's, so, it's, it's insane. It's massive. That is going to be. And I'm so glad because there's going to be a lot of people that want to get inside and really get a chance to enjoy this. Right. Right. So, again, I wanted to um, – just to, to, as part of your preparation for this, check out the floor plans, watch Dan's Instagram stories, and you're going to feel real good walking in, I think. Well, I appreciate I appreciate the, the props on that because it, it it was a labor of love, to be sure. Because I, <laughs> I wanted to, you know, I mean, we I look, I'm about as cool as the other side of the pillow. Not too much throws me, really not too much of anything. But I wanted to be prepared because even I was getting a little bit anxious about finding my way around because 
There's a lot you want to see, a lot of people you want to talk to, a lot of things you want to buy or at least consider buying. And you don't want to miss stuff because, you know, we're, I'm experiencing this. We're all experiencing this as fans. We're also covering the event, too. So we want to be prepared. And I, I think it's going to be, I think things like this map and checking things out in advance. There's a lot of great posts out there and podcasters are talking about different things with Celebration. I think it's all going to help. Now, Lisa, as a first timer, is this giving you more peace of mind, some of this stuff? Oh, yeah. I, I printed out the maps already earlier today, mm-hmm. and I, I have a little Star Wars folder that I'm going to bring with me. So I have all I, I, I have everything on my iPad, and then I print everything up because I'm old, and that's what old people do. So I, have to have, <laughs> I have to have all the, the papers with me. I can't just look at things on a device. So I've been studying the, the maps and seeing, okay, this is here, and this is here, and oh, there are the bathrooms. And then this is over here and, you know, so yeah, those maps are, are very helpful, helpful as, uh, as along with, with Dan, like your Insta, Insta stories and whatnot. I was watching those too. So, and I'm hoping to get there. I, I'm probably going to be there before you guys on Thursday. Yeah. So yeah. We'll be lucky to make it Thursday at all because we were yeah. working that day and then we're yeah. catching a train. We're not going to get, probably going to get into Chicago until about seven if that okay. Yeah, so I was gonna get over there on uh, on Thursday and get my my badge and whatnot because I think you have to go to the will call first before you enter the uh, the uh, convention center. And I was just gonna wander and just sort of get you yeah. know have my maps and look around and, and get a feel for everything before the the mad crush starts on Friday and Saturday, and then you're overwhelmed and stuff. So I figured I get there. Get we'll the follow you. We're just going to follow you. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know if I would recommend that, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be good. So let, let's go ahead and take a break uh, real quick. And when we do that, I want to thank our CWK Patreon contributors, Rebecca Raven, Dennis Keithley, Alexander Moylan, Terry Lee, Ben Elkington, Melinda Wolf, Aaron Harris, Chris Gavarka, Angela Sauce, Mediocre Jedi, Brian Harding, Blake Weaver, Chris Hamm, Amy Mulder, Jim Caprin, Caroline Maselli, Chris Metz, LJ Th- Souter, LJ Souter, Thea Selby, Jeff Ellis, Daz Davies, Tyler Wiggins, Christian Dale, Jason Hall, Brian McKinney, Connie Shee, Jared Cantor, BJ Smith, Eric Struthers, Nick Deco, and Mark Suter. Wow, listen to all those names. Mm-hmm. All those people are Coffee with Kenobi Patreon contributors. They all have access to CWK Pour Over, which is our weekly show for $5 a month that you are able to listen to. We can hear myself, Tom Gross, and Corey Club talking about Star Wars and popular culture. A lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. A lot of fun. We certainly enjoy doing it and bringing it to you. Your feedback has been tremendous. Another thing that's also tremendous is MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. I use MEI and Mouse Fan Travel for all of my travel needs, both for the show and for my family. They certainly have signature service and expert advice. It helps clients maximize the vacation time and dollar. And there is no cost to use the service. They have a no obligation quote that you can get when you use the service. And they will also proactively adjust a booking if the rate goes down, which is amazing. They will help your family enjoy everything that Disney theme parks and the cruise lines have to offer. You can help plan every detail, the best food, the best times to go, uh, times of day to go to certain parks, things like that. All those tips are invaluable. You will love it. Be sure to go to our affiliate link, which can be found on the show notes on the front of our webpage or on our Twitter feed and sign up for that free, no obligation quote. And let's be honest, you want to get your reservation for Galaxy's Edge. MEI and Mouse Fan Travel is the way to make that happen. Coffee, tea, or me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's Coffee with Kenobi. We are back and we're going to talk about panels. I have known for quite a while now that I have the good fortune of hosting a couple of panels with ABC's Clayton Sandell, who's become a really good friend of mine. So I'm excited to share that with everybody. The first one is called Covering Star Wars, and that is going to be on Friday, April 12th, on the fan stage from 6.30 to 7.15. It's hosted by me and Clayton. And also joining us up on the panel will be Anthony Bresnikan of Entertainment Weekly, Amy Rochelle uh, from StarWars.com and Star Wars 365, and then, of course, Jim Hill from Disney Dish Podcast and also looking at Lucasfilm. Everyone knows Jimmy's been a long time a voice in the world of Disney and fandom. 
He's awesome. He's a great storyteller. Everybody up here is going to be a um, great storyteller. And the whole purpose of this, Clayton and I have been planning this since last summer, actually. But the purpose is to let everybody know from all these different mediums, whether it's, you know, broadcast journalism or podcasting or writing uh, professionally for a, for a magazine, for a newspaper, for a website. There are different ways to cover Star Wars. A lot of stories we're going to share with you. It's going to be also sort of a how-to or tips for people who are wanting to get into this industry. Or if you just want to hear some great stories and laugh, I think this is the panel for you. I got another one, too, that I wanted to share. But what do you guys think? Can I count on seeing your bright, happy, smiling faces there? Oh, absolutely. Are you kidding me? This, you know, I, I'm sold on it just because you're there, of course. But... Ever since listening to your shows, your two-part show with Clayton Sandell regarding Galaxy's Edge, that I'm in on. But on top of all of that, listening to the show that you do with Jim, uh, of course, I'm, list- I'm forgetting the name Looking of it. Looking at Lupusum. Looking at Lupusum. There's so many in that family that I couldn't remember. <laughs> yeah. uh, but listening to that just adds to all of this. And you throw in, uh, you throw in Anthony and Amy. Uh, this is this is going to be a great, fun panel. I have absolutely no doubt this is going to be fun. You you can bet on me. All right, I love it. Uh, and I, I, I'm going to have to hustle to get from because uh, the uh, <laughs> the making making solo panel on Friday night ends at six thirty. <laughs> oh so wow! I, I might be a few minutes late. <laughs> That's all right. We'll save you a seat. But I, I will get there because that's on a galaxy stage, and I'm looking at the map. That's on level three, so I have to zip down to <laughs> level one. Just propel get, down. I'm looking at the uh, the podcast stage, but I'll I'll get there. I just might be a few minutes a few minutes late. I have to go to the making solo panel because that's oh I know that's on your contract. Yeah, I know. Thing. You know, I, I saw that. And I was like, oh, why do they have to bump up against each other for crying out loud? But I will be there. I will be there. But that's okay though, you know, because that we're gonna there's gonna be a lot of conflict like that. I mean, I, I remember the very first one we went to, Full of Sith was doing their podcast stage, and then I was invited to a Rebels press conference too. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is my first major press conference is media. What am I gonna do? So you you really do have to run around and and split it up. And I completely empathize. Yeah. Uh, it'll all work out great. I know it will. I, I promise I I won't make a whole lot of noise when I burst through the doors. <laughs> I thought you kick it down and say, let's start it. <laughs> Roll. Yeah, I think that would be perfect. The other panel I'm doing is the mythology of Star Wars behind the facts and fiction. Uh, I know Lisa, when you and I chatted, they were the descriptions weren't on the, the web page for a while, but now they are. Right. Uh, and you said you saw that title and you kind of figured that was something that I was um, a part of. And I am. Clayton and I are doing that one, just the two of us for that one. And I'm going to be tackling things from a story and storytelling perspective as far as the fictional Star Wars and mythology and the rich literary cultural history that is there. And then Clayton's going to look at it from behind the camera and and behind the scenes, the nonfiction aspects of things. Uh, He and I just like talking about this stuff anyway. It just seemed like a perfect panel to do. Certainly plays to our strengths. So that'll be a great one as well. Yeah, Yeah. I'll, I'll be on time for that one. (laughs) <laughs> I, I might even be early <laughs> well there you go that, that's one of the last ones for celebration overall so it'll be like everybody right. will be exhausted and then they're gonna hear me drone on about mythology so they can fall asleep like my <laughs> students do so that'll be fun. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna leave all of us with something to ponder on the way home dan i have no doubt well there you go i like that <laughs> no and my students don't sleep in class either i just thought that would be a funny easy joke but no it's it's going to be great. And I got to say, it's it's a, an incredible, incredible honor and a blessing to me that I get to be a part of these panels. It's uh, it's it's a uh, it's another dream come true, and I'm very appreciative and grateful. And I thank both of you for your support. It's very kind of you. It's awesome. Well, it's a testament to the work that you do, Dan. Well, thank you, friend. Thank you. So let's let's turn let's turn the the lens a little bit. I know that the two of you have a lot of questions. I know we addressed some last week. And you're both, of course, very proactive in, in, in finding out things anyway. But I, I just like the conversation. I know it's helped a lot of people. Uh, the last show did. But what questions do you have for me or just about celebration in general, this one, McCormick Place, anything? 
Well, I do have a I do have a question regarding the merchandise lottery. Yeah. Um, maybe you can answer. Maybe you can't. Which is just something we'll have to uh, to go and discover. But now this is this is really the newbie question, and I feel kind of silly for asking it. No. But if I'm thinking it. I'm sure probably someone else is. Exactly. So, so for those who win the lottery pick for the exclusive merchandise, that we pay a retail price for that. For those, right? I mean, it's, oh, yeah. I mean, we're winning a lottery, but it's not for free. No, no, you okay. they, they want your money. Uh, um, I thought so. Yeah, no, they. It's definitely you. You basically you're getting the right to go into their line, and then you go and you wait in the line. Depending on how many people happen to get there, the time slot before you is how long you're going to have to wait, and you're guaranteed to get up there and get a chance to purchase things. There's still no guarantee that the one that you're looking for is going to be there. Um, but the odds are much, much better as opposed to having to go on eBay and buy them if you don't get in pick for the lottery. So when you go up there and then you just that you're not also not obligated either to buy anything. You can get up there. And I've seen this happen where people get up there and they say, Hey, do you still have that? Let's just pretend like a uh, Grand Emerald Thrawn. Because that was an exclusive for 2017. And they didn't have them, so the person didn't buy anything. And they were disappointed. But just because you're in the line doesn't mean you have to buy anything. But you certainly still have to pay uh, full price. And I think the prices are listed on the website anyway. I don't think they're like big shocks. And then c- cash? Or will they take cash? Or is it I'll all? Take, I think they'll take anything. Okay. Yeah. I think they'll take yeah, anything. That, yeah, that was a question I had as well. Is it cash or credit card or, you yeah. know, what do you they, do? They'll, they'll pretty much take anything. Okay. They just want your money. However. Exactly. Whatever way they can get it. That's right. As long as it's green, yes. they, they will be happy to take it. Oh, um, another question I have is, and at least I don't want to step on your toes. If you got something, by all means, oh, go ahead. jump right in. So when, so I guess it's a two part question. Mm-hmm. Um, when when should someone purchase the autograph and photo opportunities and for both of those, are they a kind of a, a Christmas story visit with Santa style, or is there a little <laughs> bit of personal like reaction? Like you're able to say, man, I loved your performance, or I love this, or I love that, and you get to have a little quick visit. From my experiences, uh, I got autographs at Celebration 3 in Indianapolis, and I did the photo thing for Celebration Orlando. Um, what I noticed is that for the autographs, you get a little more time. I mean, it's still not a ton of time. It's just how much they have going on and, and sort of how tired they are or or what, or how many people are behind them or or just sort of where their personality is at that day or or what kind of person they are. But when you autograph with them, I remember when Amy Radcliffe got Carrie Fisher's autograph, Carrie Fisher, uh, poured glitter all over Amy and she did all, all over everybody and talked to her a little bit. Um, uh, uh, you know, others just sign it and say thank you, and they and you move on. It just sort of depends. Now, for the picture thing, that is a lot less because there seems to be, at least when I was there, more picture were getting photographs with with the different actors than they were autographs. So basically, you get up in the you get up there, and they say, "Okay, there, go stand up on that X." When they call you over, go stand over there. You smile for the picture. You might uh, you can say hello to them. Hi, hi, and then that's it. Boom, boom. I mean, you're talking about maybe a five second experience. It's very, very, very quick. Now, Alan Tudyk and uh, Felicity Jones were uh, talked a little bit more. They just said hello and smiled gen- generous. So, or Felicity Jones made eye contact with me, said thank you, and I thought that was super cool. I mean, you're talking about a major, a main character from a Star Wars movie, yeah. you know. And then when we did the one with Freddie and Sarah Michelle Geller, that one was super, super quick. And if I didn't inter- reintroduce myself to Freddie, I think you would just be like, hey, hey, what's up? And you just keep going. You know what I mean? So there, don't expect like a Santa Claus moment because that's probably not going to happen. They're more interested in moving you in, moving you out. And then you go into the line and decide if you want to buy um, a social media, a digital file of the picture as well. Because otherwise you just get a regular copy. So you will have to pay extra for the digital file. It's, it's I think it's like 20 bucks or 25 bucks, or at least it was two years ago. So who knows how much it is now. Yeah, they have the prices listed on the website, but I can't remember offhand how much they uh, how much they are. I think it was fifteen. 15? Oh, that's not that's not too bad. And but as far as when, that? what's that? Do you recommend that? Highly, 
Okay, to get the digital fi- copy of it. Yeah. Oh, very yeah. Good, so. Okay, because otherwise, take a picture of of the actual picture, but it doesn't turn out as good. Yeah, and yeah. plus it's nice to just have an authentic digital file. I mean, everything is digital nowadays anyway. But as far as you know, getting an autograph, as far as purchasing one, I would say as soon as you can afford it, do it right away. I mean, if you've been saving for it, I would do it right away because some people I didn't hate in Christensen sell out like really, really fast. Is he sold out already? I didn't I'm, see that. I'm not sure if he, for some reason I thought he was based on something I know, you, I know. you said on Twitter. I know last time he did. I don't yeah. I don't know if he's sold out now. I know a few of them are sold out. Like Warwick Davis, I think, is already sold out. Oh wow. wow. Yeah. I don't know if Hayden is or not. Oh, hopefully not. I mean, as soon as you know you can, you you know, you get in there and you pick sort of when and then you're gonna get an email confirming what time you're supposed to show up. So just make sure you put down a time and be open to the fact that you, you may miss a panel or something because you're you're signed up for an autograph. Yeah, and something that I saw that was really cool. Paul Bettany sold out. He was there for Saturday and Sunday, and those days sold out. But he was able to add Friday, and I thought, well, that was really cool. It's very cool. cool. Yeah, that was really nice of him. So, but totally yeah, totally yeah, I don't know if he's sold out or not yet. But okay, good. Well, maybe hopefully he's not. I for some I think you had said something about well, I guess I missed it, but maybe you meant something else. Yeah, I don't remember what uh, what that was. Hard to say, but that's okay. I mean, is all you need to do is go on the website, everybody, and you can see who's there, how much uh, they they will be charging. And I think, I think they have uh, times up now too. Before they just had days that you oh, could. Oh, good. But I think I, I heard somebody. I saw. Well, I didn't hear. I saw it <laughs> on Twitter that uh, somebody said that they now have the times listed, so you can pick not only your yeah. day but your time. So perfect. I was I was looking this afternoon, and they they do have the times. You get to choose. Okay, that's good. That's very good to know. So, Lisa, do you have any questions about Celebration? Um, let me see. We already covered some of them. I had a question about the Celebration store. Is there going to be a lottery for that? I haven't really seen anything. Or is that just... That's what they. Had, that's what we had said or that we had heard that you'd get to sign up for when you wanted to get a chance to go and shop. But yeah, I haven't heard any follow up on that since then. But maybe when they announce everything that's going to be at the store itself, right? But that would certainly be one that I would sign up for, right? Because that's what I thought maybe today that that would be included with the other, you know, the other ones that went up today. But then that was just the exclusives for the you know the three major brands, but uh, nothing for the celebration store. So I was curious about that, but I guess that's not uh, definitive one way or the other yet. No, yeah. I mean, in the Celebration Store, you know, like I said, if you can, if you do want to, be sure to sign up for it because there's no guarantee that, I mean, the line is four and five hours long just to get in the store. And then when you get in, you hope that the stuff you want is still there. And then you have to wait in the line to check out. So it's it's a, it's a quite a process. So be sure that if there is an opportunity to sign up, which I think there will be, we'll keep looking at that, monitoring that. We'll let everybody know on our social media. So be right. sure to do that. Right. And I had a question, too, about the, the Celebration app. I know it hasn't come out yet, and I know a lot of people are getting really frustrated about that, too. But uh, is that – have, did you use that in the past? Is that a really helpful – Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's more like – it's almost like carrying around a digital program or a map of everything. Uh, and you can also – there's a nice feature where you can mark what panels you want to see, and it will – send a reminder to your phone. Hey, get ready. You know, this panel is coming up pretty soon. So you can be ready to kind of reroute where you're at, which is, I think, very, very helpful. Uh, it, it, a lot of the results, there was a chat feature on it before. It's still, when you look at it now, it still has the Celebration Orlando stuff. But I think they're going to switch over to Chicago yeah. pretty, pretty soon. But I think on this too is where you can monitor the light speed you know, reservation system and the lotteries and stuff like that. And you can use that. I think you're going to be able to use the app for special things on the show floor as well, like different contests and different games like that too. I think it's going to be highly interactive. Okay. All right. That sounds cool. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to add a lot more to it. I really think, and again, that this is exciting that they are putting so much thought and care into this because they know a lot of people are coming. They're spending a lot of money and they're really excited about what they're going to see. So they're really going to make this a very unique, uh, amazing experience for conventions. I'm feeling a lot more comfortable over the last few weeks. It, there's there's those moments, uh, like you said at the opening of the show, uh, Lisa, there's those moments of panic where I'm like, oh my gosh, I've missed something. 
to where, okay, I think I've got this. I think I'm good. <laughs> and, and just these conversations, listening to the show again and with you guys having our, our uh, small group chat to sort of work through some of the nervousness of, you know, the, the, the online registration, stuff like that. It's all kind of made it, I don't want to say easy, but it is easy. So I, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm starting to feel pretty comfortable. Yeah, I I'll, I think I'll feel comfortable when I'm there. <laughs> I think is my I'm I'm always just sort of like on a knife's edge until I'm actually right there, and then I'm like, okay, now I'm now I'm fine, now I'm good. But sure, so yeah. leading up to, I get a little, ah, you know, because I don't do this. I mean, I'm not a, a con goer. I mean, the last last convention I went to, she's probably about ten years ago or more, a dozen years ago. So it's not something that I, that's part of my experience, you know, and then I'm not really big on large groups of people. So, you know. Well, Lisa, we are, we are one in the same in that regard. Uh, the, that, um, that crowd nervousness is certainly something that weighs heavy on me. So we will just be uh, partners in crime with that and helping each other get through those anxious moments of large crowds and, uh and uh, we'll we'll just get through it together. I mean, it's there's no way to be nervous and anxious at Star Wars, right? Yeah, we're we're all there for the same thing. So yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So help help me understand this. Maybe I can help along the way. What is it about large crowds that you two don't like? Well, I'm an introvert, so I you know I'm used to being off on my own all the time. So when I have to, I, you know, I mean, I. I I, I can function around crowds and stuff. So sure. I like turn into a little quivering mass of jelly or something. But I, my preference is for the the quiet and the calm, and you know, I feel more in control of the situation and and whatnot. But right, you know, no, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I think for me, that's that what you just said is it. It's it's kind of being out of control and going with with the flow of of a crowd that I think is what bothers me. It's not something that I've always had when Mm -hmm. I was, you know, when I was a teen, when I was in college, I went to concerts like crazy Mm -hmm. and I had no problem being in that concert, large crowd, you know, sports events, things like that. That didn't bother me at all. I think this is an age thing. Um, so I, but I'll get over it. It'll, it'll be good. Once I'm in it, I'm sure it's like, it's like getting into a cold pool, you know, once you're in, uh, you're good. I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> maybe not quite like that but you know <laughs> well, the, the, the initial shock wears off there you go uh, that's right you sort of ease into it and so oh thanks for articulating what i was shooting for there yeah <laughs> that's perfect that is i'm sure a lot of people can relate to that and that's all good you know i mean there are plenty, whether you're introvert or extrovert, there's plenty of Star Wars and plenty of fun to be had. But speaking of crowds, should we yes. talk about Sunday? Uh, well, besides uh, the, the podcast stage, what about the, the meetup? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, take it away. Well, I was just going to say, um, the uh, the podcast meetup is going to be Saturday night. And I'm sorry, I'm opening up the uh, the, the, the specifics on that right now. But I am, I am looking forward to meeting all of these people in this lengthy list that doesn't necessarily need to be a list other than just showing, Hey, who's going to, who's going to be there. Um, but, uh, that looks like a lot of fun. It's going to be at the arc bar at the Hyatt Regency at McCormick place, which you can get a sneak peek at in that Instagram story, uh, that That's you right. have. Um, but it's going to be Saturday night at seven thirty till I like the description on here till the Republic credits run out. Mm-hmm. And it's just going to be an opportunity to, to get to say hello to each other, catch up. We, you know, there's so many people, at least in my experience that, that I have met only through social media and you know we 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 laugh we make comments we you know we have a positive fun time on social media to be able lisa you're one of those to be mm-hmm. able to to sit face to face and share the stories talk about the day talk about our star wars experiences that's just going to be so much fun i i went to the arc bar because i wanted to find it i wanted to see how hard it was to find it from the convention center it's inside the convention center you don't have to leave the building you just you're gonna walk across the, the skyway over to the south section of mccormick place 
Um, or just you can walk across the, the street. Do if you want to, but you don't have to leave the convention center to do it. Uh, you just go into the Hyatt um, building, and it's right there. Again, all inside the convention center, and it's the very first thing you'll see. You'll see the Arc Bar. I walked around it. It's pretty. It's a pretty good size. It's got a number of tables. It's got a number of booths and couches. It's got a restaurant. It's got a full service bar with a lot of TVs. It's really nice, open atmosphere. I thought, oh, this is exactly and where we should have something like this. I thought it was really, really good. Again, I want to give my uh, tip my coffee mug to Dennis Keithley for coming up with the idea of having it at the Arc Bar. Uh, he was already kind of working on some things like that uh, for everything that he is doing. So it works out good. I think people are really going to like it, and I found, find it to be a really nice environment. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, I was, wonder, I was wondering what the capacity of it was, but you said it's a pretty decent size yeah, it's a good size. You could easily fit a couple hundred people in there uh, wow. and, and no problem, I think. Wow, okay. Yeah, I think I think it's going to work out really well. Uh, also, you will remind everybody while we're doing that, and thanks, Tom, for bringing that up. It's, of course, the podcast celebration stage, Sunday, April 14th from 1 o'clock to 145, level 1, room W-193A and B, McCormick Place West. <laughs> Be sure to grab a Celebration Chicago Royal Blue Tea. And wear it to the podcast stage appearance. We're going to get a huge group photo together. And if you can't make it to the event, you can still do that by getting your own uh, T-shirt and taking a picture of yourself using the hashtag CWKSelfie. We're going to be excited to share those on social media. I think that's going to be a blast, an absolute blast. And the 193AB thing, basically you can enter from the, um, the east side or the west side of this room and you can get in no problem. So when it says one in one ninety three a B it's the same room. It's just two different doors that you can use. And mm-hmm. it's a good size room, as I said, but it's, it's first come first serve. You can't reserve anything to go in there. So if you do want to come see us, please do. Uh, the last two celebration podcast stages we've had, there wasn't an empty seat and Hey, I would love for that to continue. So make sure that you are one of the people that is in the room to be a part of that with us. Anything else that we want to talk about before we wrap up this week's show, everybody? I can't think of anything. I think we covered a lot. I do yeah. too. It, it's been, it's been great as always two weeks to go 14 days yeah. until star Wars celebration, Chicago. I can't believe it. 14 days. My goodness <laughs> it's going to be so fun. And again, walking around McCormick place, just knowing that I'm going to get to do it with all these awesome star Wars fans and our friends and, Star Wars family, really. It's it's going to be great. Lisa and Tom, thank you, as always, for coming on Coffee with Kenobi. Let's let everybody know where they can find you. Lisa, let's start with you. Uh, well, I'm on Twitter at JediPug1, and I'm on Instagram at JediPug1. <laughs> and you can also uh, email me, uh, Lisa D at coffeewithkenobi.com. Perfect. And Tom, what about you? I am on Twitter at DraftLine, D-R-A-F-T-L-I-N-E. And you can drop me a line at uh, an email at TomG at CoffeeWithKenobi.com. Excellent. Well, be sure again to grab that CWK Celebration Chicago Royal Blue Tea and wear it at our podcast stage event. And thanks, everybody, as always, for joining us for a cup of coffee. We'll be back next week. For our last show until Celebration Chicago, I can't, mm. I can't believe it. <laughs> I know I'm a broken record, but my goodness, it's it's really so close to being here. Thanks again, everybody. This is the podcast you're looking for.